Number six. Finance Organization and Personnel Committee report relative to the FY18 Supplemental Road Improvements. On a vote of 4-0, to zero, the Finance Organization and Personnel Committee recommends approval of the proposed FY18 Supplemental Road Improvement Program as presented. Councilor Greenwald. Thank you, Your Honor. Moved to carry out the intent of the committee report. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Councilor Greenwald. Thank you, Your Honor. Don Lucier, our um, city engineer, came to us with some very good news. There's a state bill that passed regarding some excess money in the gas tax that is going to bring Keene uh, $417,000 for new road improvement. Also, uh, there's $258,698 left over from some 2014 and 2015 projects. So a total of $676,000 is available for some additional road improvements. Running down the list briefly and quickly, uh, Gun Road, Red Oak, uh, Water Street, Beaver Street, Winchester Street, Island Street, Optical Ave, and Eastern Ave will see some unscheduled work. This is in addition to $2 million that are already scheduled for next summer. What's important with this is that, for one thing, this money has to be used for road use and used for new projects not already in the budget. So Finance Organization and Personnel Committee got really excited about this. You know, this is not additional tax revenue. This is, we're actually getting something from the state, believe it or not. And uh, recommends that we uh, go forth with this. So to, just to make it clear, we're going to take two major projects scheduled for fiscal year 2019, and we're going to move them up to do them in 2018 using this money as, as the mechanism for doing it. Yeah. Okay. So. Hey, Councilor Chadbourne. Yes, um, staff did a great job doing this, and I thank you for that. Um, uh, during the uh, finance meeting, <clears throat> I expressed uh, my opinion that I thought the road was in pretty good shape because it was a rural country road. Um, and I received a call from um, a resident up there who was speaking on behalf of several residents. Um, and thereafter, I drove the road again, um, and I saw it differently. And I would have to agree with the, the um, residents that um, it needs work. Uh, I drove up there once this summer to Julie's greenhouse, and it was a day off and a beautiful sunny day, and I had the windows down and the music going, and I was poking along like I was a hundred years old, <laughs> and, uh, and it just was like, oh, this beautiful rural country road. I just loved it. And um, so I had my rose-tinted glasses on, but when I went up there this time, I looked at it from the eyes of the residents and uh, the fact that, you know, there's four seasons involved. It's not just a beautiful sunny day. And uh, I could see where it needs um, a lot of work. And so I apologize to those residents. Um, and I'm glad that we're doing this and we're pushing it up. Thanks. For the questions or comments, Councilor Sutherland. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd just like to remind the body that um, last year we went through the budgeting process. Public Works uh, identified a number of road projects that needed to be conducted throughout the year, uh, made recommendations on the budget. Um, we passed that budget. Then the June, July 1st, occurred and the budget started going into effect and shortly thereafter the Department of Public Works came back with a, a laundry list of additional projects and the finance director identified money that had been found for projects that had never occurred that we had borrowed money on that we had been paying interest on since in some cases since 2008. That amount was over four hundred thousand dollars so we've already moved up projects from next year's CIP project for road, road work in the amount of over $400,000. We've now gotten additional money from the state. We're moving up additional road work. My, my point here is, is that we are being reactionary to the money that we find. We have a process here, ladies and gentlemen. Our process is to look at what the needs are of the city and appropriate the money as, as best and as efficiently as possible instead of getting money and spending it on a regular basis. The taxpayers are squeezed in this city. 
we are on a regular basis here hear excuses, and they are excuses, that it's the state is why, why our taxes are so high, that it's the school board as why our taxes are so high, that it's the county as why our taxes are so high. There's nothing that this body has done this year, substantially, to cut spending. This is an opportunity to say no, or it's an opportunity to say, we will take this off the, off the CIP for next year, and that's it add nothing else to the CIP. But we have, to we have to stop borrowing, and we have to stop spending. We need to plan better. And this is an opportunity for us to do it. I will be voting against this. This is an opportunity for us to better manage our finances. We are beyond our fi fiscal policies. Over 14, I believe it's 14% of our annual budget is spent on servicing our debt. I'm not trying to diminish the importance of these projects. I'm trying to, trying to elevate the importance of fiscal responsibility. Thank you. Uh, Council Sutherland, uh, let me point out a couple of things in connection with this. First off, uh, we are prohibited from using this money for 2018 projects. That, that, that is a condition of, of the receipt of this money. However, by using this money for 2019 projects, it, and it's going to be a council decision as to whether you want to add projects or whether you want to use this money that, that is freed up from 2019 to reduce the amount of bonded indebtedness. But that's a council decision. That's, that's not a state decision. That, that's not an individual decision. But we have that opportunity, if the council chooses to, to reduce our bonded indebtedness in 2019 by using this money in 2018. This, is, this money is not wasted. Uh, Councilor Clark. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody that there have been several initiatives that uh, uh, City Council and staff have taken forward in the last couple of years and this year uh, to, to save the, the city money. Uh, the LED replacement for street lights is going to save us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in electricity. Uh, we're looking into uh, buying solar electricity at a lower rate than uh, what uh, what uh, uh, Eversource charges people. Um, we, we, we have a, 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 you know, a joint procurement initiative with, this, with, the, with, the, with the schools that uh, we're, we're trying to save money. We, uh, at, every, at every level, uh, we have staff uh, and, and city councilors uh, coming forward with ways that we can uh, try to be more efficient with our budget and to save money. Councilor Greenwald. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I wasn't really too clear and as I was presenting this. The leftover money, that 258000 left over from 2014 and 15, that is money that is committed to road projects as part of the bond requirements. The 417000 this is money from the state committed to road improvement projects. As the mayor said, we have a decision if we want to take uh, these projects off the CIP in the future, we can talk about it. Part of what I didn't say is that uh, these roads, it's a combination of maintenance and also preventative maintenance, uh, some seal coating, some things that are going to preserve the life of the roads. If we can catch the roads as they're starting to deteriorate and stop the deterioration, it's a huge savings to the taxpayers. I know this from my own experience dealing with my own parking lots. Seal coating is critical. I cannot afford to replace the parking lots and repave it. I have to maintain it. That is what the Public Works Director brought to us, that a lot of these projects, it's getting us ahead instead of the catch-up. Uh, the full repaving of a road, it's monstrous. Look at what's going on on Water Street. So I mentioned that there is uh, Water Street in, uh, within this list. It's not the whole Water Street. It's just from uh, the Eastern Avenue up the hill where the Public Works Direct, uh, uh, Department did some patching and shimming and this and that so that next spring when the whole thing gets its final coat it's done and i don't expect that we'll see public works doing any paving on water street oh, for a good number of years for the first time we're thinking of getting ahead it's a, it's an advanced plan and i commend the, uh, the public works department for coming up with this and not just crisis management of roads council sutherland Thank you, Your Honor, and thank you for that additional information. I suggest that we vote against this and take more time instead of talking about it later. 
I suggest that because winter is coming, we're not going to be paving anything in the next few months. We have plenty of time to talk about this, fold it into our plans for our CIP for next year, and understand how this will impact the taxpayer over the long term. Thank you. John Slee Richards. Yeah, my understanding on the state money is that we need to take it and use it for roads. If we don't take it, we don't get it. It'll go somewhere else. It will go to somewhere else. So if we don't take four hundred thousand dollars that's being handed to us to, to improve our roads now, we don't it, it doesn't come back to us. So I, I I would strongly encourage you to vote for this. Anybody else for the first time? Anybody else for the second time? Got a first. I uh, Councillor Powers. Thank you, Your Honor. I think in all this discussion so far we you forgot to emphasize that every single road that's mentioned in this project is already on our list. Some of them have been on our list for 20 years. These are not new projects. It's not something we just drug up, pulled together. This is part of our plan to try to address all of our roads in some fashion. And we haven't been addressing them because we don't have the money. It's a perfect opportunity to combine that state money with the savings we've had with some other road projects and get some of those off the books and move forward. And all of those decisions have been made by the city council, not by the department, not by staff members. They made recommendations. We decided to do this, and we decided to be either ahead of the game or behind the game in our road projects. So this is just an opportunity to move this along fairly nicely, still slow when you look at the whole list of 152 miles of roads, something like that, in the city of Keene. It's a great opportunity, and we shouldn't let anybody else get that money. Because <laughs> <laughs> they won't do it again. Right. All right, Council Sutherland. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not encouraging people to, to vote against this to say we shouldn't take the money. I'm not suggesting we should vote against this because we shouldn't spend it on roads. I'm suggesting we vote against this so that we have a bigger picture and understanding about how we spend this money. We have, as a council, we've been talking about shifting our road projects to PAYGO financing so that we can stop borrowing money. We are fiscally out of bounds on our policy. And this is an opportunity for us to take a good hard look as to how do we, we can fund this in this year. We can take this money and spend it on roads, but how does it impact our borrowing? Because we've been borrowing all this money for our roads up until now. So how does, how does it fold in? What is the big plan? This is what we need to look into. We need to plan better. We are poor planners here. The proof is in the pudding. We're out of our fiscal bounds. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, are there any, any further questions or comments? Seeing none, are you ready for a vote? All those in favor? Opposed? One opposed. <clears throat> Spend away.